at this point, we need to take a chill pill and relax and stop hating on this one plugger because honestly, he does not deserve it. And I know as a fan base, we are much better than to hate on a certain guy that actually has some really great statistics. I'm going to talk more about this coming up here on Locked on Blues. Your Locked on Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Locked on Blues. I am your host of Locked on Blues, Haley Taylor. So I've been talking to you all things about our St. Louis Blues here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, every day. So I want to start off this episode by saying that I am first off so happy that the St. Louis Blues had back-to-back wins. I know that it's been quite a while since the Blues played, and they will be playing tomorrow night, so like, thank God. And I will have an episode tomorrow due to the fact that I couldn't do Monday's episode because of some flight delays and just a whole chaotic event at the airport. So happy about the fact that I can do an episode tomorrow when the Blues do actually play. Today, I want to focus on one player in more specifically Tori Krug um, because he deserves some defending. So I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to talk about some playoff hope with how so. How am I going to be positive? Yesterday, I talked about the logistics and how I think the Blues could get into the playoffs. Now I'm going to talk about how I actually have some hope after all this time. And of course, my favorite Friday segment, Are You Feeling Blue? A lot to unpack on today's episode of Locked on Blues. So I was actually scrolling through my Instagram and I'm bringing this post up right now because uh, for me, it was an awakening of kind of comments. So the St. Louis Blues Twitter account, if you can see my phone, it's a little hard to see, posted a picture of Tori Krug. And it says, Tori Krug is the third active NHL defenseman to record 25 plus assists in 11 or more straight seasons and the 10th active player overall to do so. So Tori Krug, obviously a very impressive player. So definitely like the fact that that was something that was highlighted. And a lot of things on this post is really kind of get me is, can this guy actually play defense? You know, trade him. I thought this is a retirement post. You know, just really coming at Tory Krug. The thing with Tory Krug is we know that he's a two-way defender, right? And we know that he's the type of player that gets kind of a lot of hate, especially after that whole trade line debacle where he didn't want to leave St. Louis. and. Honestly, maybe from a Philadelphia standpoint, you could look at it and say, yeah, this guy sucks. He didn't want to come to my team. But if you're St. Louis, you should be thinking to yourself, hey, this guy wants to stay with our city, but yet they're giving him so much hate, which I truly don't get. And I understand that he is a frustrating player. He's not the best defender, right? But at the same time, he's a body that has, well, a big body. He also knows how to lead a team, right? He has good leadership skills. And I do believe that a lot of the hate that Tory Kerr gets is unjust. Now, you can make the argument with me saying, hey, Haley, I think that there are better defenders than Tory Kerr. A hundred percent, I would agree with you. When you look at guys across the NHL, there is no doubt that Tory Kerr is not one of the best defenders. And I never said that he was. I just said that Tori Krug is a veteran defender that actually happens to be a good two-way player. And it goes to show with his stats, it goes to show with everything that he does, that he is a player that you can really trust to solidify greatness on the ice. And I get the whole, you know, Tori Krug, you know, he's old, like 47, should retire. I, I understand. Not everybody is a fan of Mr. Tory Krug. I believe that he is 32 in age. So I know that like in hockey, that's a little bit older. I hate to say because I'm 25. So I'm like, oh man, that's aging me up a little bit even. But uh, Tory Krug definitely is one of those players that is getting a bit older with the game of hockey. 
But even this season, right, 30 assists, which is amazing, and three goals with 33 points, kind of similar to last year. Last year he scored a little bit more, but we know that he's not a huge goal scorer, but he is huge when it comes to the assists. And as that record said, you want to take a step back and look at his history, and I'm going to only talk about games that he's played, like, not the first two seasons with Boston where he played two and then one game, but he has literally had, you know, 26 assists, 27 assists, 40 assists, 43 assists, 45 assists even, 47 assists, 40 assists. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he's a guy that's able to give you a lot of assists, and he's able to generate plays. I just don't understand how we're in March, and I feel like he's endured so much hate since the summer. And I was a hater at one point, okay? I can admit, I was somebody that was like, I don't want this guy on the team. Like, we need to get some younger players. But at this point right now, with the potential of going to the playoffs, I would be very happy with his leadership, his skills. I mean, when he was with Boston, like, the Bruins have been good for a while. You know, we beat them in that Stanley Cup. And, yeah, like, do I feel good about it? Absolutely. Like, we beat the Bruins when Tory Krug was on the Bruins. So, obviously. Um, That's, you know, that's kind of funny in a way. But Boston's one of those teams where I really do feel like he gained so many skills with the postseason. He's gained a lot. And I feel like he can also then help our younger players. But if you, for whatever reason, are still on the hate train of Tory Krug, just know that he is going to be here until he retires, it looks like, allegedly. I don't think he's going to go to any other team. I think that he wants to stay in St. Louis. And, you know, he made a great point. Oh, my family's here. And that's a valid statement. Now, well, somebody like me who doesn't have a spouse or kids yet, um, sometimes I find myself in situations where it's hard to relate to that because I could realistically move wherever I want and not feel like I am letting anybody down with discomfort because, again, I am focusing on me. But if you're Tory Krug and you're thinking about your family and other priorities in your life, it makes sense, at least from his perspective of, hey, I don't want to move. And sometimes, yeah, it can be hard to understand where other people come from in those type of things. I know that sometimes it's hard for me to understand. But again, he made a commitment to play in St. Louis and this is where he wants to be. He doesn't strike me as the type of guy that's going to get up and go to another team next season, even if they are a contending team. And maybe I'm a little naive. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, maybe he will, and maybe I'm just not looking at the signs. But based on everything that I have seen out of Tory Krug, I just think that he is going to stay here in St. Louis. And that's a positive. I don't see anything negative with that. I truly just see it as, you know what, he wants to be here Good for him, happy for Krug, happy to have him on the team. But it's like that same thing where Jordan Kyra got a lot of hate this season. And for me, I just have a really hard time understanding how you can hate on a player so much, be so mean, and uh, think that's acceptable. Because at the end of the day, Tori Krug does provide a lot for the Blues. And I'm not saying that he is the best to wear the blue note because he's not, okay? But I just sometimes have a really hard time understanding that level of frustration because as frustrated as I am, he's not the biggest problem that the Blues have. The Blues have a lot more problems than Tory Krug, right? They have a problem, honestly, when it comes to the team as itself. And sure, It's easy to look at different players and say, okay, well, if this guy wasn't here, we would be better, but I don't know. And I understand that he's not the best defender and he's not great at defense, but everyone's just so harsh on Tory Krug. And I'm not defending the fact that I think that he's not a great defender. I'm defending the fact that why can't we just be a little bit more pleasant towards him? And I think that I might get some backlash on this being said everybody's going to get backlash on opinions that they have. And I'm saying, I'm sharing an opinion right now. It may not be a popular opinion, but I'm sharing it. I don't think Tori Krug deserves all the backlash that he gets. And I am not going to apologize for that. 
because that's the kind of, I mean, at this point in his career, he's not going to, you know, become the best defender we've ever seen. It's too late in his career for that. So you get what you get out of him, right? And I guess that's what it is. I'm going to tell you about my friends over at Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees only apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 Validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, involves risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is registered broker dealer. I also want to talk to you about some playoff hope. I think at this point in the season, we know the St. Louis Blues are definitely a team that could make or break. Right now, they're looking like break. And I've been hopeful about the playoffs because, like, who wouldn't be? This is, like, the fun part of hockey where you can really cheer for your team, be a little bit optimistic. And, uh, yeah, I just really want to be able to do that. Anyways, when it comes to the St. Louis Blues, they are a team that has the potential to go to the playoffs. They do. As I've talked, they need to continue to win and they need to hope for the downfall of some other teams like Minnesota and Las Vegas. But I think that Minnesota isn't as good as a team as St. Louis. And I truly believe that now, you know, I love my Mark Andre Fleury. I mean, how could you not? He's like, everybody's one of, he, everybody loves him. Okay. First off, like everybody loves some flower, but at the end of the day, we are better. I think Bennington right now is better at the, in the moment than Fleury is. I'm not saying of all time, I'm not throwing disrespect. I'm just saying, like, in this current moment, I think Jordan Bainton is a better goalie than Marc-Andre Fleury in terms of a skill right now, in present time right now. So I don't want anybody coming at me and saying I'm disrespecting Flower. I Trust me, I'm the last person to disrespect Marc-Andre Fleury. Um, And, again, this is assuming that he will be in that tomorrow night. I think that the Blues, though, and the reason why I have playoff hope is because nothing is impossible. Anything is possible. And this is a team that has been so inconsistent all season. But for some reason, I just have like the scut instinct that towards this end of the season, they're going to pull out all strings and be actually successful on the ice. And that is something that is giving me hope. Yes, hope. Because I hope so. And how so? How do I have this hope? Trust and belief. I can't believe that this team would go back-to-back seasons without making the playoffs. Now, logically, yeah, I could see that happening. But hope-wise, I just don't know if I can see that. And I have to believe this is my team. I want to go to the playoffs. I want to be able to have a good draft pick at the same time. But you can't get two things at once. And right now, they're not going to, quote unquote, tank enough to get a good draft pick. Um, So it's just one of those situations where it's a difficult situation in a sense of I don't know. I just don't know.
So, the, yeah, it, it just... And I'm having hard times with words because the more I think about it, the more annoyed I get because this is a team that has the capability of being so successful in the playoffs. And don't you understand that at this point, that this is a team, you put them in the playoffs, you could see some magic happen. And yeah, maybe, maybe it's the fact that the St. Louis Blues had that magic cup run, right? And everything was perfect. Perfect. Everything was golden and it worked out for us, even though we were dead last in the West in that January of that season. But that's not normal, right? And I think back to that season a lot. And I think back to all of the things that have happened. You know, we got, oh God, I miss Chief so much, but we got Chief. Like there was just so many factors that went into that season and why we ended up being the Stanley Cup champions. And now, I'm just a little bit defeated, a little bit defeated, not a lot defeated, but a little bit defeated because I don't know if we have that magic, but I know that that magic exists because we still have five of the players that got us that beautiful, glorious Lord Stanley Cup. And you have to believe, okay? You have to believe, right? That's what sports is. Okay. But. I do want to let you know about something, my friends, and that is Ibota. I love Ibota so much. I'm so happy that they're a sponsor of this podcast. So grocery bills are so expensive these days, as we know, but now they don't have to be. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibota app and get cash back every time you shop. One thing I love about Ibota is that it's a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from when it comes to groceries, to beauty supplies, to toys. So you can start to make sure that you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta purchase earns $256 per year. And that literally is a game changer so many times. Like people are always like, oh my gosh, like, you know, if I had a hundred bucks, like I could do this, that, and that. 256 bucks, that gets me quite a lot of things in my life. That gets me groceries, that gets me gas money. So you already know that money is going into good use. So join over the 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora's, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta offers our listeners... $5 $5 for just trying Ibotta at Locked on NHL when you register. Just go to the App Store, Google Play Store, and download the free Ibotta app and start earning cash back and use code Locked on NHL. That's Ibotta in the Google Player App Store and use code Locked on NHL. Are you feeling blue? Yes? No? I don't know. I think this is the first Am I Feeling Blue where I genuinely don't know how I feel this week. Obviously, I feel good about the two wins, but at the same time, I'm like, do I, I just, I know I'm ready for disappointment. And I think that's like the worst part about it is that I feel like this team could go on a run and still not make it to um, the playoffs. And that's what really stresses me out is that I kind of can feel everything kind of just working out for the Blues except the other teams and then they get eliminated. And that is my number one stressor at the moment. Now, do I think that's going to happen? I don't know. Do I think that the Blues are going to somehow pull things out? Maybe. But again, it's one of those things where I just get so stressed out when it comes to this team and what this team can do. I'm feeling good about the two wins. That's awesome. You beat Boston and you beat LA. But will you beat Minnesota tomorrow? Will you become a team that is going to make it to the playoffs? I don't know. And that's where my hesitation lies at this point in the season. You have under 20 games. I believe it's 17 games left if I'm looking at my statistics correctly. And that's not a lot of time, really to, you know, get the points that you need. If you play 17 games, right, and you get and you win every game, that's 34 points. The Blues, I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there. I don't think that's going to happen. But what I do think can happen is a lot of good things. I think that we're going to see some of the younger guys play a little bit more hockey, develop more, and that excites me. I think there's just a lot about this team that really has me hopeful for the future. And I think that's one thing 
that is getting me going. So yeah, a lot to look forward to. I am super excited for tomorrow's game against the Minnesota Wild. And I will talk to you tomorrow. And like always, let's go Blues.